Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. Do you ever do something for years and then for a couple days, maybe a week or so, you're too busy or whatever happens, you're sick. And then when you go to do it again, it doesn't feel like it was real. Like I just had to, I think it's been like four days since my last video. I just had to explain to myself every single part of having a YouTube channel because it sounded fake. It was like, so you just like find a tweet and you talk about it? Okay. Like, how is that interesting? <laughs> and then you upload it somewhere? Like, who's going to watch that? Five to 10,000 people? That doesn't sound real. <laughs> like, that sounds like something you would have to pay for. Like, to advertise it. So, thank you for watching. Um, but uh, books are... I will, I'm, I'm kind of debating. This might be part of the uh, video for the next Indiegogo, which is launching tomorrow. I know, I'm late, I know. Uh, I'll probably mix and match, because some people are going to watch this one, some people are going to do another. But uh, basically, <laughs> um, I got a whole bunch of books coming out. Uh, two books are in print files, uh, another two letters or lettering being fixed, another one just uh, cover art, that's it. So basically, like, every week for the next five weeks, um, I'm going to get a print file done. And then I will be all caught up on my late books. Um, but I also have a move planned for this fall. And I just <laughs> spoke to my accountant, and I was like, uh, I want to keep my Texas LLC. And he's like, yeah, that's cool. And then he's like, you just got to pay uh, taxes in the state you move to. And I was like, but I created these comics, like... The Jawbreakers contingency, it's like like three-fourths of the way complete. Um, like, no. like So basically, what would happen is I would move somewhere, and then I would launch a campaign, and then I would have to pay very high taxes. It, it, it makes no sense. So um, basically, I'm going to show you that I'm done with stuff, and it's going to be a great, great deal. It's going to be uh, two books for one, so you can find a friend, you guys can order it, one person orders it, or you can sell the other one online, or you can give it away as a gift, uh, whatever, but you're basically getting a, sec a second book for free. And uh, first kill graphic novel, that one, this campaign, <laughs> <coughs> this campaign will be up until after fulfillment and we sell all the books, because you're always going to print a few extra but this uh, jawbreakers that starts tomorrow it's only gonna be 30 days because I gotta launch it and finish it and get the money and everything has to happen here before I move or massive taxes <laughs> massive massive taxes whereas Texas is uh, low taxes um, so anyway um, so will Robson well uh, I don't have an account, so I can't look at threads. I can only I can only look at one tweet at a time. So I went to go look at his thread. I couldn't see it, but ironically enough, it showed this from uh, two months ago. It's official. I just signed the contract to write and draw my new creator-owned comic at IDW. I am so excited for this and can't wait to share more details with you all. I can't say anything yet, but I'll be posting some teasers soon. Two months later, well this sucks, my creator owned book with IDW just got cancelled midway through making it. I'm devastated. After spending years on the pitch, I'm truly gutted. This was a huge opportunity for me as a creator and now it's gone. Guess I'm free if anyone wants to hire me. So um, uh, I went through his tread, uh, tread? thread uh, yesterday, all of yesterday, and it was very, very encouraging. So this isn't like a hit piece about, oh, this soy beta cuck, although he does have one thing. We'll get to that. Um, it seems like he learned his lesson and everyone was just like, hey man, just, just self-publish. Like, there's many uh, uh, platforms, there's many ways to do it, and... A lot of times you see people kind of just hanging on by their fingernails 
to the mainstream industry, no matter how bad it treats them, they just always want back in. The weirdest thing is somebody, I forget who it was, but I was talking to a friend and they had a legitimate massive success on crowdfunding. And their next plan is just to resume working in the direct market. I think that people think with crowdfunding, it's like gambling. Like if you win and you stay at the table, you're going to crap out. No, that's, that's the mainstream industry with no promise of winning. Um, so uh, in, the thread, in the thread, which I can't see, he gets sympathy, people ask about it. And basically it sounds like he had a contract and then they got out of it somehow and he has his rights back, but he was uh, very excited about mainstream success, government name validation. Um, but he actually seemed pretty amenable to, yeah. Here's the, the sad truth about the mainstream industry. The pay is so low that it's difficult to make less money working for yourself. So the TikTok algorithm has changed uh, somewhat. And now if you watch like two videos on the same subject in, I don't know, 10 minutes of each other, it decides, holy shit, this motherfucker loves this stuff. Like, I'm sorry, I watched two TikToks about MK677. It's literally like half of my videos. Um, but the last thing that it misidentified is my favorite thing in the world was Prince, specifically Prince's issues with corporations. Now, I like Prince. Um, weirdly enough, Prince was one of like two celebrities where weeks after his death, I was still kind of bummed. I saw this thing, I think it was a year or two ago, and they said, um, your family, your friends, for the most part, are gonna stop talking about you six days after the funeral and six months after the funeral, they're not really going to be thinking about you, not very much. So basically, live your life. But what I remember about Prince is, he was a massive success in the 1980s. And he had some successes in the 1990s, but he had a lot of issues with his label and he changed his name to, his sim to a symbol and he kind of became a, a meme. And, uh, I've been seeing some interviews with him and you know you get used to someone selling millions of copies and then you would see his sales in the 1990s early 2000s and they were a lot lower and so I saw an interview with Prince and he was talking about you know I went from making uh, or selling millions of albums and making 1% to selling 200,000 albums and making 50%. So people think I'm hurting, but I'm putting on a whole new wing to what's it called? Paisley Park, uh, his uh, home there in uh, Minnesota. Minnesota, right? But um, it really, it really is like that. Like the pay is so damn low. It's difficult to make less money in crowdfunding. But the other aspect of it is like dude it's 2023 <laughs> like I think it was the f <coughs> I think it was the first Iron Sights book there was uh, a joke about Olestra which was a food additive I think it was mainly in potato chips that caused anal seepage some some, some sort of like fatty greasy you get the idea so I put a joke about that and then a friend was proofreading it and he was like, it ain't the 1990s, Jay Leno. And I was like, what? He's like, this shit is from 20 years ago. I, no, no, it was just, a, no, it was from 20 years ago. Like that's a really old joke. They don't put that in food anymore. My point is if they added it back into food right now, like people wouldn't be like, oh, they have Alestra back in chips now. Everyone's gonna be like anal seepage. Like, I don't know how you can be so guileless two months ago 
and be excited about IDW, which had lost the G.I. Joe license, lost the Transformers license, had a 40% layoff at the same time they promoted Heather Antos. Also, they hired Heather Antos. Hey, let's, let's look at who else they hired, at least for writing uh, in the last year or so. T. Franklin. Sam Maggs, who is not Maggs Visaggio. A lot of people get that confused. And Zoe Quinn. Yes, this year they hired Zoe Quinn, not 2018 or whenever was the last time anyone talked about her. Zoe Quinn, IDW, I think it was on Adam's Family, something like that. T. Franklin. What the hell? The writing wasn't on the wall, it was on your forehead backwards so you could read it in the mirror and you signed, oh, IDW. Like, no, it's not IDW from 2005, like 30 days of night. Or it's, it's, it, you're signing, when you sign a contract in 2023 with IDW, you are, <laughs> it's not time displaced. Like. You get the IDW now. The complete shit show with massive losses, with massive layoffs, with promoting Heather Hontos, hiring T. Franklin, hiring Zoe fucking Quinn. Like, how did you look and say, this is a stable company that I want to bet my future on? Another thing. So... You might say, oh, I recognize that name. Where do I know his name from? Where, why am I mispronouncing everything? Well, he drew some stuff for Marvel. He did a West Coast Avengers miniseries. Series? Whatever, a few years ago. It was good. He was perfect for it. And he posted last December about not being paid. And then he said, we are going to start a group. It is a group for artists. And it will be for artists to defend themselves against unfair practices. And if you're an artist, join us. And then Heather Anto says, I'll join. And then he said, oh, also, nobody CG related or adjacent or just, just you know them or anything. And it completely, okay, here's the deal. Heather Antos is the man. She's a senior editor who every single week signs vouchers for sub poverty wages also she's heather Antos. like why would you sign a contract with a company that not only hires her but promotes her and not only promotes her but promotes her during layoffs what i'm trying to say is signing any kind of contract with mainstream publishing in 2023 is NPC behavior. Just like um, saying Mission Impossible 2 is the worst one. It's it's not. It isn't. Uh, but anyway, um, I'm glad this guy has seen the light. I do think he was pretty ridiculous there with his fight the power and then he <laughs> let a senior editor in and she chased away other artists and it was supposed to be a group for artists and why would you be excited about signing a contract with IDW? Like, come on. <laughs> like, that's... It should be like that uh, episode of uh, It's Always Sunny, where they have the, uh, um, the timeshare. But it's just a way to trick you into paying more to get out of the contract. It's like, who else are they going to hire? Like... I mean, they haven't hired Mags in a few years, but that's basically the only person. Oh, Vita. Yeah, they could get Vita and Mags and Danny Lohr. But, I mean, you got Heather Antos, T. Franklin, and Zoe Quinn. That's a trifecta right there. Holy shit. Like, you don't see that as warning signs. Or what do you call it? Uh, oh, that's just local. That's, that's what people in New York City always say. Oh, there's a homeless person pissing or shitting or vomiting in public. Oh, it's just pus, part of everything. Like, no, no, no. Anyway, before I go, 
first look actually i forgot how much i like youtube i uh was busy for a few days and uh quite busy getting a lot of books ready for print and uh that was fun i almost i almost talked myself out of it i was like that doesn't sound real you just like sit in a room and you, you turn the fan off and then you just like face a tablet and you're like this is my opinion <laughs> This is what I think. Like, that's... Nobody would watch that. What? Seriously? Anyway. First kill graphic novel. And, uh... I don't think I need to edit this. I stumbled over my words a few times, but... That's okay. Anyway. Thanks for watching. Bye.